What is up my beautiful weird ones out there and welcome to your March tarot and astrology horoscopes for your sign. Your rising sign will resonate most for these so do keep that in mind. The timestamps are down below. March is a pretty wild month. Make sure you share this video with other people in your life that may need to hear it or may need some guidance throughout this month. Let me know down below if this ends up resonating with you. As always, I really, really love to hear your feedback and if these messages are your messages. They may resonate though a little bit more throughout the month. They may not resonate right away, especially if you're watching this right in the beginning of the month. So definitely keep that in mind. And with that being said, really quick um if you would like more from me and more personalized messages make sure to sign up for my patreon where i do exclusive content uncensored and you can get a lot more from me for signing up for that and you can cancel at any time and there's tons of different payment options that receive tons of different stuff so definitely check that out also, if you're interested in a personal reading or anything like that, just check the description below. And with that being said, let's get into your monthly horoscope. Alrighty, Pisces, M March is a month for you. Happy birthday, by the way. March is a month for you that is a time of finding yourself again, a time of being reborn. You may still not 100% feel like you're ready to all the way put yourself out there. It may be a time where you're really reflecting and observing a lot. It may be a time where you're really going within and trying to figure out who you are, what you want, how to assert yourself in a new way, how to show up in a new way. And it's like a time of massive new beginnings for you. But there's still a lot of letting go of the past. There's still a lot of dealing with some baggage or wreckage from the past. But in the same sense, it's a time where you're finally feeling like you can move forward in some areas of your life. And so while other areas may be a little bit more reflective and maybe a little bit more secluding and a little bit more internal and dealing with endings and letting go, there's other areas where you're going to be feeling that spark again, where you're going to be feeling like you again, where you're going to be feeling like, okay, I can do this. And there's just going to be more of an optimism, more faith and just a lot more energy in the air for you, for you to be able to start new things, for you to be able to be thinking about where you wanna go, what your next steps are, who you are, and how you've changed over the last year. You know, this, this month is gonna be a lot about reflecting on this new you that is being born, this new you that is coming up from the ashes. And you're really going to be, uh, you know, learning a lot about this new you. and seeing yourself in a new light really is another way that I would put it. But I also see here, Pisces, that you may be a little bit stuck. You're trying to balance these two options back and forth. And I think the problem is, is that you are viewing them as separate. Um, a lot of the time I get asked by clients or by my patrons or, uh, you know, whatever, like, am I on the right path? And I cannot stand that question because <laughs> it implies that there's a wrong path. It implies that there's a right or wrong path. And I think that you could be stuck in that this month where you're trying to make a decision or you're trying to make a choice or you're trying to choose a certain path and you're trying to juggle these two options. And you may feel a little bit stuck in the mud. You may feel like, I don't know which one to do. I don't know which path to take. I don't know what to decide. I don't know what decision to make. And it's kind of like the more you struggle, the more you, the more the struggle persists, basically. It slows you down, the messier it gets, the more chaotic it gets. And what I'm really seeing and feeling here is that no matter what path you choose, <laughs> It doesn't matter because whatever path you choose is the right path, is the successful path. That is the path your soul needed to go down for whatever reason. You know, it, it's, I personally believe, especially being an astrologer and seeing people's charts, that nothing is really like our soul knows what it came here to learn. So we will meet the right people. We will have the experiences. We will have the interest. We will like and dislike certain things because our soul knows what it came here to learn you know those things that we do admire those things that we do like those things that we like to do you know all of that leads us down paths that we came here to explore and so i feel like no matter what it is you know even with this wheel of fortune here i feel like you are going to be successful no matter which path it is and i also feel like some of you guys could be juggling two different things 
and there's like a lot of wild success for you this month if you can find a place to be in the middle and not separate not divide not judge and i talked a lot about this in march's uh video overall video so if you haven't seen that i mean it's your season so you definitely don't want to miss that video if you haven't seen it but um yeah i feel like there's a lot of success to be found this month if you can stop looking at it as being stuck and start finding what you know what about it gives you you know this this spark then i feel like you are going to be okay it's going to work out exactly as it's supposed to um if you can wash the mud off and stop struggling for a second slow down because this month is slowing you down to a certain extent it is saying like hey we need to slow down there's some things going on beneath the surface here that need to be looked at there's some things going on behind the scenes some old stuff that needs to be addressed some maybe bad habits or some self-sabotaging stuff that keeps you that that holds you back or there are some things from the past that need to be released or revealed to you that need to be worked through and so there could be a lot that you're doing behind the scenes and i see that here with the knight of swords you know this could be bringing up some fears for you this could be bringing up um a lot of outside noise and a lot of outside voices especially in the beginning of the month and i think this is pulling you in inward to listen to yourself rather than to listen to everybody else to find the faith in yourself again because that is what your mission here is pisces it is to find the faith it is to unify it is to drop the division and the separation it's to, it's to transcend separation it's to transcend duality right and so when you can find the purpose in polarity when you can find the purpose and the dark and the light, when you can find the purpose and the and uh, the neutrality between the two, that is when you rise above. That is when you step into fate. That is when you step into this path or this purpose that has been destined for you. And you also have the fool at the very end after fear. And so it's kind of this like, what else do you have to lose? I really feel like you're ending the month learning this lesson of what else do you have to lose? It's time to take that leap. It's time for new beginnings. Like I, I really feel like by the end of March, you're really like, you found that spark again. New beginnings are happening and you are moving forward in a way that is like so you and it just feels so good to be you again. It just feels so good to be in your body right? To just have that higher faith. And so this month is really addressing your fears and addressing where you've let go of that faith, where you've let go of what it means to be you, where you've denied that or pushed that away because of other people or because of the world or because of the collective or because of what other people are saying. Like shut other people out for a little bit. Take a break from social media. Take a break from other people. Like seclude yourself, isolate yourself for a little bit if you have to and find you. Find a way to accept all sides no matter what it is. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly. Find a way to become one with that because you already are. You just aren't thinking that you are and that's what's causing the struggle. And so hopefully that makes sense for you, Pisces. But that is really what I see for you this month. Okay, we have a new moon in your sign on the second, which I think is really going to bring this up. You know, what do you believe? What do you, what do you want to start? What do you need to start doing again? How do you need to get, like, how can you start getting back with yourself this may bring up some reality checks for you of like some things that you become aware of that are like that you need to let go of, that you need to surrender, right? Uh, this definitely could bring some of that up for you. And Mars and Venus are going to enter into your 12th house on the 6th and then be there for the rest of March. And so that's definitely going to be bringing things back around from the last two years and reconciling a lot, letting a lot go and working on things behind the scenes. Um, working on certain self-destructive or self-defeating habits and behaviors. And then we have a Virgo full moon happening on the 18th in your opposite sign. So this is definitely going to be a time of, of relationships and bringing up the relationships in your life, focusing more on the details and kind of realizing why the details are necessary and, you know, how you can put this faith, put this unity into works, into the physical world. And then the sun's going to move into Aries, your second house, and it's um, on the 20th, and it's going to be 
a time where finances and what you what you value, what supports you is going to really come into the picture. And then towards the end of the month, like the very end of the month around the 28th, Venus is going to come into a conjunction with Saturn. And that is going to be a time of really kind of seeing maybe where you hold yourself back and where maybe certain relationships in your life uh, have been holding you back in some way. And so there may be a serious outtake on that. But I think that's kind of where you realize like, what else do you have to lose with the fool here? And it's kind of like a whole new beginning, beginning and awakening at once where you can shed these fears and go into April with less, right? And that's really what this is about, shedding. And going into April feeling more lightweight, feeling more like you, right? And so anyways, that is what I'm seeing for you in the month of March, Pisces. Please do me a favor before you leave and let me know down below how this resonated with you. And if you're not sure yet, at least at least uh, let me know if you finished uh, your horoscope all the way through down below. And yeah, I love you guys. Uh, you can even comment hashtag Pisces gang down below as well. That works too. But yeah, I love you guys. I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Hello Aries, welcome to your March 2022 Tarot and Astrology Horoscope. I hope you guys are doing fabulous. Wow, I have quite a powerful reading here for you for March Aries. I hope this resonates. Definitely let me know down below if it does or come back throughout the month and check in and let me know as well. But March for you Aries is a time of deeply surrendering. It is a time where you could be feeling a little bit like an underdog or a little bit outcasted in some way um, in some area of your life for some of you, maybe not all of you. I know this doesn't sound great, but honestly, this is great because it gives you a chance to really reevaluate your social life and your surroundings, the people that you surround yourself with, what you're doing, what path you're on, where you're going. And so at times it could feel a little bit lost or you could feel a little bit lost in what's going on, but this is a chance for deeply, deeply healing. And not only deeply healing, but deeply letting go and surrendering to where you can get to a point of trust within yourself and to where you can get to a point of fully embracing who you are and that love for yourself again. And so I really see here Aries and multiple different messages that this is a month where you're retreating a little bit, where it's kind of like you have this instinct or you have this spark within you that is telling you to walk away from something or it is telling you to retreat, to move away from something that maybe you've been emotionally attached to previously. And this may be a little bit difficult for you at first, but it's important that you trust that instinct, okay? Because this is coming up for a reason. There's a lot of healing that can be found in March for Aries Risings, especially. Um, there's a lot of surrendering. There's a lot of going back and reflecting and, and letting go of old habits or self-sabotaging behaviors or etc. And for some of you, you may be feeling like, oh, well, am I just escaping something because that's what I tend to do at times. But really, I don't feel that it's that because I feel like there's a situation in your life that could be going through a massive transition or even ending, especially to do with a social situation. This could be a relationship with a friend or a group of friends or uh, just some kind of relationship in your life that could be going through a massive change or a, a pretty big ending. Um, there could be some commitment issues here as we have the commitment card reverse and we have rock bottom. And so I really feel like you're reaching kind of a, a pivot point, a turning point in a relationship or any social situation. Um, and, and it could even be, maybe it's not a, a social situation for some of you, maybe it's just a commitment in general you know, a commitment to yourself or a commitment to a goal or a commitment to like an ambition that you've been trying to go for for a while. And you're kind of reaching this turning point as Venus and Mars are going to be entering your 11th house of your social life, your friends and your connections. And so this month is really going to have a large focus on those things where you could be feeling a little bit out of the ordinary or you could be feeling, you know, with the sun in your 12th, like you just want to retreat or get away. You want to find your right people. You want to connect with your right people. And maybe it's not feeling that way with the current people in your life. 
We also have the Bone Collector, which is very much about conditioning. Where are you feeling like you have, or, or where are you feeling like you're suffering from old patterns, old conditioning? And this is really going to bring that up this month with all of this 12th house energy. And we also have Moonlight. So you may be feeling highly intuitive this month, Aries, like a lot more than usual. Your dream world is going to be very on and popping. It's going to be very active. You're going to be really feeling like a massive release and you're going to be having a lot of visions. Okay. With the three of wands here, it's a bit, it's like a massive time for visions, intuitive insight, and you can get a lot of spiritual work done. So do not waste this time. Anything that you're struggling with, anything that's coming up during this time is only showing you where you can do the work to release that and how much better you'll feel once you release that. We also have the King of Cups here, which, you know, really goes with a lot of this water Pisces energy. And so you could either have a figure in your life that is a water sign or is very much like a watery presence where you know, there's a lot of emotion involved or they are very spiritual or intuitive or just very healing, like a very healing presence in your life. I could also see a lot of areas like, you know, this month would be very great for going on an actual retreat or getting near the water, getting away, like being in a secluded spot where you can really like just heal, you know, take some time off, take a break, just really heal because if not, that energy will catch up with you and it will put you in a state where you start feeling a lot of heaviness, you know, where you start feeling like stuck and where you start feeling like there's, there's not, there's not much else, you know, to do, or there's nowhere else to go because you're feeling stuck. Okay. So I also wanted to read these two cards to you. So we have the bone collector, which I said is about conditioning. Um, but I wanted to read you what else it says. So it says, you are whole and have faith uh, and have everything you need. Sorry. When the bone collector appears, she is asking you to look closely at your circumstances to see if you're fully present or reacting out of past conditioning and unconscious expectations, which is very 12th house, by the way. Whenever we're wounded, especially when we're young, it's as if something essential is stolen from us. We adapt and accept a version of the truth that then sets us up to behave a certain way in the future when faced with a situation similar to the original event. What we know about ourselves thus becomes influenced by a perception of limitation. You may feel unworthy or without courage. You may see yourself as flawed or unlovable or expect to be criticized. The bloom collector reminds you that the truth is that you are a powerful being with limitless possibilities. She has kept safe what was stolen from you in the wounding and is here for you as you reclaim it now. You have everything you believe you lack. And the bone collector is your inner resource. Act as if you have what you need and you'll find you have it after all. Anything is possible. With awareness, the wounds of the past need not define you. And so that is the bone collector, but I also wanted to read you Moonlight because I know there's a lot more there. Uh, so... Moonlight, your intuition allows you to see beyond the mundane, logical and analytical, follow it. Moonlight beckons, come and trust your intuition to lead you into places that may not seem logical. Your hunches will be right on target. Resist second guessing yourself for your alternative perception is especially sharp right now. You can see beyond the surface of things and truly read between the lines. This is a good time to use Oracle cards or other systems of divination to gain information. Remember that the language of intuition is a symbolic one. It comes sub subtly, subtly, <laughs> I can't say that word, through a hunch or a tingling, a clear sound or an animal or object crossing your path. Spirit is sending you messages to help you now. Success is yours if you follow the signs. So those are your two oracle cards or those are those two oracle cards. Uh, we also have the two of pinnacles and the ace of wands reverse. And so once again, um, it's about trusting your intuition, not trying to make logical sense of things or try to decipher things, right? Uh, it is about really trusting in what you feel and kind of like making decisions based off of your hunches and not trying to gain some kind of clarity because I really feel like the clarity will come, but it's, it may not be there this month. You know, Mercury is going to be in Pisces in your 12th and so the signs and symbolism are what going or is what's going to be important 
And so really trusting in yourself and your inner world and focusing on your inner world is going to be important, but there's going to be certain things that come up in your social life, in your external world that are going to change. And that's okay. Um, instead of looking at it as a bad thing or looking at it as you're alone or looking at it as you're unworthy or uh, that you have to prove yourself or something like that, it's better that you retreat and work on yourself. Use this as a chance to work on you, okay? So that is what I'm seeing for you, Aries. Um, in your astrology, uh, your ruling planet will be moving through your 11th house, like I said, Mars, with Venus. So it will definitely be a time of a major turning point, you know, in your social life with friends, with connections. You may be feeling very called to kind of find new people in your life or to reconcile things in terms of your social life. Um, we also will be having, you know, all this Pisces energy in your 12th house, which is going to be about integration and transcendence and, you know, seeing beyond duality, seeing beyond polarity and rising above transcending you know healing and really recognizing these old self-defeating patterns that you need to let go of we also have a virgo full moon on the sixth and so this is going to be a time where you know you are i think where you may get a little bit more clarity and where you can really put in this spiritual work you've been doing or this behind the scenes work that you've been doing where you can really kind of put that into perspective and, and use that and integrate that into your day-to-day -day reality um, and so, but I'm going to be doing a separate video on the Virgo full moon as well. So, so yeah, that is what I'm seeing for you, Aries, for the month of March. Definitely let me know down below, uh, how you are feeling. And if you are seeing this energy, I would really love to hear about it. And, uh, feel free to comment hashtag Aries gang. If you finish all the way, if you finish this horoscope all the way down below and yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Taurus? Welcome to your March 2022 tarot and astrology reading. Let's go ahead and get into it. So March Taurus for you is a month that shakes things up quite a bit in your life. A very massive keyword that I'm getting here is instigation. Um, there's going to be a lot of instigating. There is going to be a lot pushing you and that is challenging you in a lot of ways to step outside your comfort zone or to do something different. And that is because we have Mars and Venus traveling through the sign of Aquarius after March 6th, and they will begin to square Uranus mid-month. And so by like mid-March, you will be getting squared from Mars and Venus. And this is going to cause you to really feel like the heat has been turned on in some area of your life. It is going to be a time where you are either working harder or you're dealing with leadership issues or you're dealing with authority figure issues, you're dealing with career related issues or just life related issues in general, like really looking at the big picture and where you're wanting to make changes. This is a massive time period, Taurus. Like this month is a major turning point as Mars is completing its two-year cycle that it started pre-pandemic, like right when the pandemic started. And so this is a time where it's like, okay, all or nothing, what are we doing? And where you're going to be pushed to possibly take some big risks. You're going to be pushed to kind of spin the wheel and see where it goes. And it's just going to make you feel like I need to fucking move. I can't keep waiting for something else anymore. I can't keep sitting in this comfortable position. And it could even mean that something breaks to where you feel like it's time to move. You feel like, okay, now that this is gone, I'm free to go. And so it's going to be kind of this push and pull between freedom and liberation versus force and taking action and movement and willpower. And so there's going to be a lot of that in the month of March for you. And I really see that with your cards here. This could be a time where you're facing some pretty big fears uh, in your life. But it's so important that you do because staying in the same spot would be so much more miserable. It would be so much more intense for you and you would be feeling stagnant, you know. And that's really, you know, what this Dragon's Lair card is about. You know, it's about 
facing some pretty big changes in your life and going through a time, a, a very risky period in your life where you're not really sure if it's the right thing or not, you know, and you may not feel this right away. It may not be until, you know, later in the month where you start feeling this like mid month, like I said, but, um, yeah, it, it's going to be a time where you're, where it may feel like you're inter you're entering a challenging, uh, some challenging territory and it won't last like super long. It'll only last for like a couple weeks, but it will shake things up. And it's going to be a time where you are a lot more aware of your surroundings, your life, your future, your career, authority figures, what you want, etc. Um, and so I wanted to read you what this card has to say really quick. So it says, uh, you're about to enter dangerous territory. So tread carefully and be aware of your surroundings. The path you're on now is one that will challenge you to the core. That said, peril is also exciting and exhilarating, like the danger you feel before you enter a new relationship, knowing that you'll be changed forever. A life lived fully isn't lived only in safety. A new experience is calling to you, one that will test your courage. The choice is yours, but there is greater value and risk than remaining unchallenged. New territories are waiting to be discovered. And so, so yeah, and then we have the card movement. And so this is really pushing you to move or else you're going to feel like you're losing your mind a little bit because of that Uranian energy in your sign. And so it's going to be important to embrace taking action, embrace movement. And this card says, this is a time for positive momentum as you come out of a period of restriction. You're in a stage of new adventure and discovery. You may feel compelled to take a trip, change your hair, or move your home or business. Regardless, you can't remain where you are anymore. You feel compelled to go forward. No matter what your inquiry, you will see your dreams take form and doors previously shut begin to open as if by magic. Movement is also a state of mind. The fog lifts and you now know the actions you need to take. This isn't the time for fear. Let it go and move forward. And what's really interesting is you have the Nine of Swords, which indicates a level of fear. And you also have the Strength card, uh, which is about facing fear, you know, overcoming fear and finding that courage within yourself. Courage is not you know, something that you wait for in order to overcome fear. You gain courage by facing these fears head on. You gain courage by moving forward, even though you're scared. And we also have the nine of wands, you know, which is also very much about instigation, but it's about change. It's about moving forward. It's about taking that leap. It's about taking that risk. And that is really what I see for you this month, Taurus. Like it's a, it's a big month for taking risk, for taking action, for overcoming challenges. Uh, we also have the five of wands reversed. And so I kind of feel like, you know, there could be a conflict coming to a head this month or some kind of competition coming to a head this month or some kind of struggle that you've been dealing with coming to a head this month. For some of you, it could have to do with a leader or authority figure uh, or career related stuff, but it's a time of new beginnings. And I think you're gonna really be feeling that this month and you're gonna feel fired up to make that change or to take action or to initiate something new, you know, even though it may be kind of scary or even though you may not know where it's going to take you. And that's the thing, you know, you have your inner compass and it's okay to trust yourself. It's okay to trust your instincts. It's okay to trust that, you know, in your belief systems, you know, your higher self spirit source, whatever you want to call it, like whatever you believe, whatever higher power you have, really connect to that this month on a month like this, really connect to that. And you can do extraordinary things. You know, a square can be challenging this square between Mars and Uranus and your sign, like it can be challenging, but it can also uplift. It can also shake you out of stuckness and it can also be very inspiring and motivating. And that's what this month is. It's like moving you. And so you're kind of in this position where it's like, do I just want to keep doing what everybody else is doing? Or do I want to just keep living by these standards or everybody else's standards? Or do I want to, do I want to do what I want to do? Do I want to have the freedom to do what I want to do? And so for some of you, you could be stuck in some of these, like, you know, some kind of corporate job or some kind of job that involves other people and everybody's doing the same thing. And you're kind of like, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I want to do my own thing, you know? And so this this transit may push you to stand out. It may push you to do something different. It may push you to do something more outside the box, outside the norm, uh, to, you know, stand out in some way, to do, to embrace your individuality, to, 
you know, do something shocking or random that you wouldn't normally do or wouldn't have normally done otherwise, you know? And so, but you need that, you know, like it's happening for a reason. So trust that. Okay. So, um, and we're also in Pisces season, which is your 11th house of friends in your social life. So this could definitely be a good time for networking. Maybe you meet somebody that really almost like inspires you or helps you to do this or uh you know meet like your your friend life and your tribe can really grow during this time and you can really start feeling like you're connected with other people during this time and so that is really awesome about this month you may find other like-minded people that you share similar beliefs with or that you connect to in some way that you relate to in some way um and so that can be really really you know beneficial during this time so yeah, so those are the two main things that we have, all this Aquarian energy in your 10th house, bringing up your career, your life goals, your life path, your achievements, what you want out of life, authority figures. And then we also have, you know, all this Pisces energy, bringing up your connections and your gains and what you are gaining, you know, from your status and your, your career and all of that, but also the connections you need to make to get to where you want to go and the like-minded people in your life. And so those are the main things I'm seeing for you this month, Taurus. Definitely let me know down below if this resonates with you. Leave hashtag Taurus gang down below in the comments as well if you watched your full horoscope, if you've made it to this point. And thank you guys so, so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Gemini? Welcome to your March 2022 tarot and astrology forecast for the month ahead. So Gemini, March is a very interesting month and we have a lot going on when it comes to your belief systems, education, social issues and your beliefs around that, political issues and how you view the world, you know, what lens you view the world through. And we also have a lot going on in your 10th house of career and purpose and, you know, where you're going in life and what you want to do in the world and your reputation in the world. And so these two spots are being very, very activated um, this month. You could be, you know, really keeping up with a lot of world events or you could really be focusing on certain beliefs that you have or learning something new um, or you could be just focusing on the world at large or, you know, your career or something like that, you know, education, etc. And so that's really what I see here for you for the month of March, Gemini. But I really believe here that this month for you is kind of coming together with an unsuspecting side or like coming together with a unsuspecting party if that makes sense so and what I mean by that is that you may be a little bit too set in your ways in terms of your ideas or your views on something in your life or something in the world or your belief systems etc you may be like really defensive over a certain set of beliefs that you have or that you share with others and I really see that in terms of the Nine of Wands here and the Hierophant, where you really are thinking a certain way and you think that it's the moral way or you think it's the right way. But what I'm seeing here is, especially in Pisces season, is it's about unity. It's about coming together. It's about listening to other sides. And we really kind of need that in the world right now. And I also see that with the Four of Wands here. Where can you listen to you know other people or other opinions or opposing views of yours with the queen of swords here you know um and i also feel like a big theme for you this month is independence as well uh independence and kind of looking at all angles instead of just your own because that's what pisces season is about it is about coming together it is about seeing the similarities rather than the differences it's about hearing each other out and relating with each other instead of separation or division, you know, like that's the last thing we need, right? Like is more division. We also have the bone collector. And so I feel like this month, Gemini, you could also see where maybe some of your beliefs or some of the ways in which you view the world uh, have been brought to you by other people in some way. Like maybe you've been conditioned to believe that in some way, or maybe someone told you that, or maybe you're you're listening to other people's opinions too much instead of really going inside and figuring out what do you feel? You know, what do you feel internally? And where do you need to trust your own intuition in terms of where you're going in life? 
and how you're viewing the world in general, you know, instead of maybe just focusing on what others are saying, right? And so I feel like some of you guys could be dealing with some of this. Now, on the other side of this, we also have some really beautiful watery energy here. Uh, we have the full card. So, you know, some kind of new beginning and really just like, you know, retreating and letting go of old emotional attachments. You know, what else do you have to lose? You know, where can you let go of things that may be holding you back or old emotional baggage that isn't getting you anywhere, old attachments that aren't getting you anywhere, you know, especially in life and your worldviews, your belief systems, etc. Where are you too involved in some, you know, kind of construct that or a theory or whatever the case may be that may actually be affecting you negatively in some way, you know? And so I kind of really see that here for you, Gemini. But I also feel like this could be a month where you get involved and you do start listening and you kind of get involved in something bigger than yourself or you get involved in, you know, unifying people in some way. You get involved in, you know, something that feels purposeful or meaningful to you at the very least, you know? And I see that here with the star and the nine of cups, you know, like finding fulfillment, finding that sense of fulfillment, finding that sense of healing um, and looking at things through a new lens, looking at things through a new way, finding that sense of purpose in your life, you know? And I feel like that's really March, you know, finding that sense of purpose and letting go of old narratives or old ways of looking at things that are actually, that you're powerless over or that are not getting you anywhere, that are making you feel stuck, you know, with Saturn in your ninth, like, that are giving a general sense of heaviness and density to your life that are, you know, really making you not feel great about yourself or your life, you know, like, where can you get rid of those things, you know, so that's really what I'm seeing here, you know, this month is kind of a time of really taking a second look at what you believe. It's a really ma massive turning point for your belief systems. And it's really about kind of reconciling, you know, some of these things that just are not true for you anymore, um, or that aren't true for your life anymore, or that aren't getting you anywhere, you know. And I also see here, Gemini, for March that, you know, we have a lot going on in the very beginning of March, uh, where you could be kind of going through something kind of intense or, you know, some kind of new beginning emerges out of some kind of intensity. Um, and then as the like, you know, first week of March moves on, we then have Mars and Venus moving into your ninth, which I think is going to bring up this massive topic of belief systems and higher education and social issues and, you know, rights and morality and, you know, all of these types of things that, you know, you're maybe going to be getting a second look on or you're maybe going to be looking at it in a new way or from a new angle and then you know we have that virgo full moon around the 18th um, of the month which will be in your fourth house so it may bring bring up the topic of your personal life your home and your family but also i forgot to say we have the sun joining jupiter on the 7th and this may be kind of like an expansive uh opportunity in terms of your career life your professional life or what you want to achieve in life you may feel very optimistic around that time as well. Um, and another really big thing that we have in March is Venus and Mars will begin to square Uranus in your 12th. And so this could be definitely where you're starting to see this break or this turning point happen in terms of what you really think or what is unique about you versus what maybe you're supposed to think or what you've been conditioned to think or what you've been led to believe or the the perception or the view that you feel you're supposed to have to kind of fit in or to be a part of some something in your life you know and so um that could be it as well there could be kind of this push and pull between kind of secluding yourself and doing things in a different way versus thinking and believing in a certain thing, you know, and so kind of watch out for that push and pull energy this month. It could be a time where you really just want to break away or do your own thing or, you know, uh, focus on you for a bit and get away where it could be a time where you, you know, there's something subconscious in you that's getting riled up or there's something behind the scenes that's getting riled up that 
that makes that that puts some kind of pressure on you in terms of your belief systems or social issues or you know something like that your world views and so that could be something as well like mid month and so definitely watch out for that uh, especially like from like the 16th to the 22nd is when i think you're really going to be feeling that intensely so and then the sun will move into aries which is your 11th house so that will also bring a light on social topics, networking, but you may be feeling a little bit more singular around that time, or it may be a little bit more geared to your ambitions uh, going into April. So, so yeah, that is what I see for you, Gemini, for the month ahead in March. Definitely let me know down below if any of this resonates. I'd really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you watched all the way through, make sure to comment hashtag Gemini gang down below. And uh, yeah, I love you guys. I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Cancer? Welcome to your March 2022 Tarot and Astrology Horoscope for the month ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, Cancer, we have a lot going on in your 8th house of Aquarius and your ninth house of Pisces. To me, this screams esoteric, taboo, dealing with uh, mortality, dealing with spiritual realms, dealing with things that are important to you and also letting go of attachments, dealing with possibly some even harsher areas of life or some deeper or darker areas of life and really exploring these things as you go through some kind of profound metamorphosis or change and are able to come out the other side and learn the purpose or meaning for this change. And so that is really what comes to me when I look at this month for you as a Cancer rising. So with that being said, I really see that you are exploring the depths of things that are a little bit darker as we have the Page of Wands, the Knight of Wands, and the Death card. And this to me really tells me that this month you are exploring some massive change going through your life. But with all this Pisces ninth house energy, you're able to learn from it, integrate it, and rise above it. For some of you, this could even be exploring certain darker moments of the past and integrating that and rising above it certain shame guilt remorse like baggage that you've been holding on to that you need to break free from and so this month is really about having the strength to open your heart even in dry or darker places having the strength to feel what you feel and move through that and I also really feel like for cancer right now, there could be this feeling of loneliness or this feeling of, you know, fear or issues involving the people in your life. You know, this could be a time where maybe you're feeling cut off from other people or you're feeling a little bit more alone than usual. And I feel like this energy is really telling you to go within and it's weeding out people that are not supposed to be in your path because of the massive transformation that you're going through, the massive transformation of self that you've been dealing with. You know, we even have the metamorphosis card here and protecting treasure, which is about really protecting what's important to you, really getting back in contact with what is important to you, your roots, who you are as a person, and letting go of anything else that does not matter, right? Uh, if you have some kind of spiritual practice, if you have some passion, some hobby, or if there are a few people in your life that are really important to you, that have integrity, that you can trust, that you know you can open your heart to, really protecting that at all costs while you go through this time of like this whirlwind where everything's just kind of blowing everywhere, you know, it's kind of like if a tornado is coming, you want to make sure you have what's important to you with you so it doesn't, you know, get destroyed in the process. And not to say that it's going to be that intense for all cancers because I don't believe it will be, you know, I don't have like a, a super intense feeling about this. I just feel like for some cancerians, um, it's a process of change, you know, there's some kind of change happening in your life. And I feel like a lot of you guys are able to integrate that easily, actually, with this Princess of Wands and Prince of Wands. It's like, there's a feeling of almost like needing this change. It's like feeling refreshing. You're exploring these other realms. You're exploring what's beyond your normal day-to-day -day life, right? I also feel like the topic of finances and investments and shared resources could be coming up with Venus in your eighth and Mars in your eighth and really getting deeply serious with yourself about 
power dynamics in your life, power dynamics in your relationships and friendships and with other people? Um, is there a sense of kind of overriding, uh, you know, certain relationships or connections in your life or of kind of inserting yourself in situations that maybe, you know, you're maybe it's just not on your path or is that happening to you in some way? You know, this is a month where you can really find the courage and the strength within yourself with the strength card here to feel right to feel your emotions and to heal and to move through that uh because i really I, I just really feel like that is going to allow you to integrate and transcend a lot of these deeper more intense feelings that you may be feeling or these deeper intense situations where this old baggage that you are ridding yourself from so we also have dry desert and I, once again i feel like this is kind of hinting to you being or feeling kind of alone or feeling kind of in this vast space with not much to do or you know whatever and once again we go back to protecting treasure getting back to what is important to you that makes you who you are getting back to what you value getting back to what you need to thrive and what you need to you know basically grow but i'm gonna read you what this card says really quick uh, because there's a lot more to it so it says, is your life presenting you with opportunities that seem to yield nothing? Have your ideas dried up? Does it feel like you're on an endless journey through a dry, hot, lifeless desert? This card reminds you that there are times when, sorry, <laughs> that there are times when you're meant to become resilient as, your journey, as you journey through harsher circumstances. You're being required to conserve your energy until, after consistent effort, you reach the oasis you're searching for. Consider the creatures that live in these conditions. They have adapted to thrive in spite of the outer environment. Any desert, water, essential for life can be found deep underground. Go deep within yourself now. Find your truth there. Let spirit sustain you while you locate the real source. Whatever it is that you're asking about will not be found in the conditions you're in until you move past the surface of things and choose to do the real work and discover the answers deep within you. This may not seem like the most productive time, but looks are deceiving. This is a more, this is a most important place to find what's truly right for you. And what's even more interesting is after that, we have the spirit of place. And I wanna read that to you. So it says, authenticity is the essence of power. Our ancient ancestors believed that every place has a spirit looking after it or embodying it. Just as we have a soul, the plants, trees, birds, mountains, and rivers have their own essences. When the spirit of place arrives in your reading, it says that the answer to your query is in the overarching theme of your circumstances. Is your question about a struggle? The answer is relax and let go of your need to control the situation. If your inquiry <clears throat> relates to finding love, then embody love rather than long for it. Once you find the essential truth that underlies your question and then name it, you'll discover the answer you've been seeking. Your greatest power is your authenticity. And I really feel like that's what this is. It's embodying what you feel, embodying what you need instead of looking for it outside of you. Because I feel like the more you look for it outside of you, the more you feel disappointment because it's not measuring up or it's not exactly what you need. And the more you find yourself in a struggle or in some kind of difficult struggle or situation with others because you're looking for what you need in someone else when you already have it within yourself. And this is a month to go inward into those darker places, into the shadow, into your intuition, to trust that more spiritual unseen realm within you. And that is where you will find your metamorphosis. That is where things start changing for you. And so, yeah, I want to also read you the metamorphosis card really quick. You're in the process of deep and beautiful change. Butterflies earn their wings through great effort. The process of change is often painful for it is never without losses and sacrifices. If you are, if you are to transform from one form to another, a part of you needs to die. Letting go isn't easy, especially when you're used to thinking a certain way about your life and how you live it. Just as a snake sheds its dead skin or a caterpillar dies so that a butterfly can be reborn, you're required to release your old ideas and embrace a necessary change so you can live your best life. Perhaps you're being asked to let go of low self-worth, a dream that no longer serves you, a relationship that is draining or unhealthy habits, 
Despite your fear, you must accept that this is a transformational time for you. There will be some loss involved, but you'll love what you become. And so, yeah, that is kind of what I see here. It's like you're going from kind of like the curious, you know, uh, innocent child, so to say, to someone with more wisdom, someone with uh, more to gain, someone that knows more, you know, and through that, through that, you thrive, okay? And so, and something else I really see this month for you, Cancer, is that you could be dealing with some disruptions in terms of friends, acquaintances, your social life, etc. Maybe there are, you know, some plans or something that get disrupted in some way or you know you end up kind of trying to you know you end up trying to be involved in a situation that maybe you're just not feeling a part of in some way and so that could be something else but there's some kind of disruption happening here with the acquaintances and friends in your life I really feel that um, and so and I, I really feel like this is kind of like I said in the beginning a time that's pushing you to become resilient and to trust yourself and to find what you need in yourself instead of searching to, through external sor sources or other people or other things or, you know, whatever the case may be. And that's really in your astrology too with this eighth, ninth house, you know, with this all this eighth, ninth house energy and all these transits through your eighth and ninth where you are really letting go of old attachments and transmuting that energy and going through some kind of metamorphosis and learning from the process and diving deep into learning new things that may seem a little bit taboo or esoteric or whatever the case may be. But it's like you really find that you can thrive and transform through that change um, and that you can transcend and heal that way. And so this month, you may be very focused on educational pursuits or finding a mentor or healing or, you know, something like that. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier, there also may be a topic of shared resources, finances, and, you know, um, financial affairs and matters that come up as well. But yeah, that is what I'm seeing for you, Cancer. Definitely let me know down below if this resonates. If you watched all the way through, uh, comment hashtag Cancer Gang down below. I love to hear your feedback as always. And yeah, I love you guys. I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What is up, my fellow Leo Risings? Welcome to your March 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. So this looks like a really interesting month for us. We have a lot of relationship stuff coming up. A lot of the significant relationships in our life, I feel, are going to be at a massive forefront as we are really reconciling, reevaluating, and going through a major turning point with the people in our lives, our friends, our relationships, our, our close relationships, our significant others, etc. Uh, we are really reevaluating these areas of our lives and figuring out what is valuable to us, what we want to pursue, what we want to continue to um, be involved in or take action on or work on and what we may need to change or cut out of our lives, you know? And so that is going to be a massive focus for us, but we also have a lot in Pisces, which is our eighth house, which is about a lot of different things like finances, shared resources, uh, taxes, money that's owed to us or money that we owe for, to other people, money and resources that we share with other people in any way, um, all of those types of things. But also it is a taboo place and it's a place that deals with more esoteric and taboo occult like topics. And also it's a place where we transform, where we let go of old baggage and where we transcend into something new. Uh, and so a lot of those themes we can see coming up for us in the month of March 2022. So let's go ahead and get into your cards and then we'll talk more about the astrology. Uh, so I really see this month, Leo, that something is being kind of uh, reconciled in terms of money and finances where maybe something was shorted or something like wasn't enough enough in terms of money or finances that is being worked out in some way and so if you are dealing with a tougher financial situation especially if you're a leo rising this is being worked out with temperance here um it is definitely i definitely see a lot of you guys also uh moderating your money being a little bit more 
discerning with what you're doing with your money um, and where to put your money, etc. But I also see you guys learning new things and doing a lot in terms of maybe even manifesting or spiritual endeavors involving money and involving finances and resources, etc. And so that I think is going to be a really, really big, uh, big topic for the month of March for you guys. We also have the three of pinnacles here. And so I feel like, you know, a lot of you guys could really be putting in a lot of work and, uh, you know, doing something a little bit different or doing something that you weren't sure that you could do. And I feel like with the devil here, you are working out a lot of self-worth issues this month, Leo. Like we are really kind of getting to the bottom of a lot of these shadow traits that we have that make us feel either less than or not good enough because in the typical three of pinnacles card, uh, there are like two guys and then there's another guy and the guy, the one guy is like painting the mur mur uh, the mural or the mural, mural, if I could say it. And the other two guys are kind of just watching like in shock. And the two guys that are watching are from a higher class than the guy that's painting. And so the three of pinnacles is kind of like an underdog card, you know, it's kind of like, you have talent, but are you gonna put it into works? Are you gonna actually do something with it? Um, and the devil here is coming up. And so I feel like, you know, this is about facing a lot of fears and taking action. Like, are you going to finally take action on what you want? Or are you going to sit by when you know that you can do it, right? And are you gonna sit by out of fear or out of old conditioning or out of feeling like, oh, I must not be good enough or whatever, like these toxic traits that actually get you nowhere, are you gonna keep letting them overcome you? Or are you going to initiate something? Are you gonna actually take action and move forward with something and put that energy where you know it belongs basically we also have the emperor card and the chariot which is very interesting so i feel like there's a lot of movement in terms of your career this month there's a lot of facing possible challenges as well but being able to overcome them um, and feeling very much in your power feeling very much in your um possibly even like somewhat in your masculinity um, even though there's some like femininity here too, but like, I really feel like with business, like business is taking off in a certain direction for Leo's this month. And I feel like it's going to be very much about overcoming, um, polarities and bringing both your shadow and your light together, bringing these different aspects of you together, bringing your feminine energy and your masculine energy together, um, into one to move forward. And we even have that kind of like, echoed here with the high priestess and the hierophant <laughs> which i thought was very interesting they both came out together and so i feel like this month is going to be about how deep into your spiritual beliefs how deep into your spirit you can go the more deeper or the deeper that you can get into your spirit the deeper that you can get into your intuition into your beliefs into your inner knowing and into your external knowing, you know, because these are basically the divine, uh, you know, uh, the divine, these are basically symbolizing the divine, the divinity, the, the masculine and feminine divinity within all of us, where the high priestess is more internal, it's more of an internal knowing, and the hierophant is more of an external teaching and, know, and knowing. And the high priestess knows that she has the power within her, where the hierophant thinks the power is external. And so it's kind of like a blending of the two, I feel. And with Mars and Venus in your seventh house, I feel like this could definitely be a time where divine relationships are coming to the forefront. You're wanting more relationships in your life that help you, that have some kind of meaning and that like actually help you grow, that are actually like going somewhere, right? Like that are actually like adding to your life, contributing to your life you're wanting more divinity in your life and you're kind of exiting this like old mindset of how things work like you know that leo full moon in our sign like really triggered something right it really brought up like this new us right it really brought us back to ourselves and we really needed it you know and it was really about integrating this these other parts of ourselves that maybe we hadn't seen in a while or maybe we hadn't we had forgotten about or maybe we 
weren't really thinking about or whatever the case may be, it really brought in this new energy for us. And now is the time to implement that energy. Now is the time to really dive headfirst into whatever feels intuitive, whatever feels divine to you, whatever feels like just like you could just <laughs> like you could just transform into it right and a lot of you may be learning like esoteric taboo uh spiritual topics this month with jupiter and the sun and neptune all in our eighth house in pisces um and we're just really wanting relationships like i said with more meaning more purpose and really trying to find connections that we relate to in our lives and um, in the month of march and really you know working things out with the connections in our lives and really moving forward with new connections or letting go of old ones or reconciling or whatever the case may be it's going to be different for different ones of you but it's definitely a time where you're going to notice a lot in terms of your relationships and the significant people within your life um we also have the metamorphosis card here leo which tells me that there's definitely some kind of change that's happened or that is happening in the month of March for us where there may be some difficulty, like there may be some challenge that needs to be faced. There could be some external competition or some external uh, issues, social issues that we have to move through or deal with, uh, especially that are affecting us in terms of our career or our life or our, um, you know, what we want to do in the world as Mars and Venus and our seventh is going to be squaring Uranus in our tenth. So there may be some struggle between our relationships and the people that are in our lives versus our career, our goals, our achievements, authority figures, etc. So there may be some kind of back and forth struggle where maybe we want to be free and liberated in terms of that, but maybe some kind of situation or social situation in our lives is kind of holding us back in somehow or is kind of pushing us or kind of distracting us in some way. And so but we also have peaks of joy, uh, which I really think this month is going to be very much about finding that joy and situation, um, really finding those moments that excite you, finding those moments that just really give you pleasure, that make you ecstatic. And I know that's what I've been doing. I've been diving very deep back into my spirituality. I've been working so much with like energy and just becoming an open channel and just so many different like healing modalities and it's just been absolutely refreshing and absolutely amazing and I've just been like on top of the world and like this orgasmic bliss state for like weeks now ever since that Leo full moon so um yeah and I feel like that March is kind of a continuation of that like yes it will have some new energy coming in with a lot of this seventh house relationship energy but it's also this like just beautiful energy of diving deep uh, we also have the card wide open and I really feel like this is just becoming a wide open channel, dissolving separations and dissolving issues with others, dissolving um, certain boundaries that you have that are limiting you in some way. And then we also have intention uh, here, which, you know, I really feel like a manifestation energy for Leo, like maybe you're working on manifesting or you're getting very deep into your high priestess energy and really seeing, you know, what you're capable of, your full potential. Um, but I want to read some of this to you. So let's start with peaks of joy. So it says your life is filled with happiness, so share it with others. Joy is yours, no matter what your inquiry you will be happy with the results. You're coming closer to a sense of achievement and you've worked hard for it. You're surrounded by true companions and events that are synchronistically arranged to bring you to the next level of your life. The world is singing a beautiful harmony. Life is exhilarating and hopeful. Yet let gratitude fill your heart and remember to share your happiness. Joy is contagious. So we also have wide open says you are free to express your uniqueness to the world and share it in all the bounty of life's possibilities all manner of opportunities are presented to you at this time the wide open card is a signal that you're able to truly manifest your dreams and that your goals are in sight don't remain small and contracted instead expand your horizons beyond what you believe to be your limitations you have a unique voice that needs to be expressed in the world the universe is supportive of new ideas and approaches at this time, so speak up and speak out. This card is the sign of the maverick who freely roams the wide open space of possibility. Allow for a greater vision to replace old ideas as you dream a grander dream. Wow. 
Um, I'm definitely feeling a lot of that energy already, but the intention card says deliberate, clear intentions have the power to change your world. Your objectives will be fulfilled at this time. Inspired intentions are like magic arrows shot into the sky. The universe is bringing you a gift, showing you that you're hitting your mark. Recognize that you're not the one, not the one who has to do all the work. However, others help you co-create reality. You connect to the power of your intention, sending it out into the field, then allow for synchronicity to work its magic. Perhaps the good intentions of others will inspire you to send out beautiful ones of your own. Own the life you want to lead and live de deliberately with clarity and detachment. And so I think this month has a little bit to do with patience as well from all of that. I think that there is so much possibility and potential that is really going to start being felt this month as we are ending some major cycles and starting new ones. All planets are direct and there's this forward momentum that you can feel. And it's kind of like you've, you're doing the work and you're ridding all the baggage that is stopping you from moving forward. And you also, you know, it's also a time where you are feeling more energetic and wanting to initiate more in terms of your life and your potential and all the possibilities. And so, so that's what I really see for you this month, Leo. That's what I'm seeing in your astrology too. Um, other than that, I think I actually named off quite a lot of what was going on this month throughout that reading. But like I said, Mars and Venus will be in our seventh house. This is really about relationships, commitments, and the people in your life and also how you show up into the world you know, where maybe you've been feeling like, oh, I don't have anything different to add or, oh, how can I fit into this? And this month is really like trying to remind you of that, you know, like you do have something to share. There's so many different possibilities. So get out there and be you, be authentic to you because there's no one quite just like you, you know, and so that's what makes you different. Um, we also have a Virgo full moon on the 18th, which is in our second house of money and resources. So we could definitely see those topics coming up towards the end of the month. And then the sun will move into Aries on the 20th. Um, and that is our ninth house. So a lot will come up around that time around learning, travel, belief systems, educational pursuits, all of that. And then on the 28th, we have Venus conjunct Saturn. And I think that's going to be kind of a serious time for our relationships and our significant relationships, like maybe addressing boundaries or commitments within certain situations within our lives, or even feeling a little bit restricted in terms of relationships at that very end of the month for a few days. So watch out for that. There could be more of a serious tone to relationships or a relationship could be getting more serious in some regards. So that is what I'm seeing for us, Leo. Definitely let me know down below if this resonates. Also comment down below, hashtag Leo gang. If you made it all the way through this horoscope, I truly, truly appreciate you guys and I will see you guys in my other videos. What's up my lovely Virgos and welcome back. Welcome to your March 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. This month is so crazy, especially for you Virgo. There's so much going on and I have a lot of powerful messages here for you today. So listen up, buckle up and get ready. Okay, so let's get into it. In March, I really feel like it's kind of a make or break time. It's kind of a turning point. It's like, are you going to keep repeating the same patterns that are not getting you anywhere? Whether in life, your lifestyle, your work, certain habits you have, you know, relationship stuff coming up. Like all of these things are going to be really, really big for you in March. And it's like a massive turning point. It's a massive shift. And it's, like I said, kind of a make or break time. You have some lovely energy in your relationship sector, but you have a lot of energy coming up when it comes to your lifestyle, your habits, your work, your routines, um, your health, you know, any health issues that you've been dealing with. Like all of these things are really coming to the forefront. And if you haven't been putting the work in, if you haven't really been, you know, making firm decisions about how you want to move forward with this energy, then March is the month where something could kind of come up. There could be a culmination point where it's kind of like, okay, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to resolve this? What is happening? You know, and either these issues that you're having could be bleeding over into your relationship life 
or the relationship life could be affecting these issues or they could be two separate things entirely where maybe your relationship is one thing and that's you know doing it like going a certain way and then you have this like health work day-to-day routine lifestyle stuff schedule stuff that's coming up and yeah i think it's really up to you if you are going to move forward with the same baggage because right now is a massive massive time of moving forward the energy right now is so strong it is so potent it is so powerful and you can literally do just about anything like anything's possible with this energy there's so much potential out there but it's all in how you use it you know and if you're wasting away on the same issues the same problems the same shit that's been holding you back and not resolving it, not finding a solution for it, not reconciling it in some way, then that could really come up this month and be a large focus this month I really see here for you. I think your day-to-day life or your day-to-day routines, you know, with Aquarius being your sixth house, have maybe been too focused on you know, the collective or too focused on air or too focused on like the mental realm, like you've been too in the mental realm in your day-to-day life and your day-to-day routines, or you've been too focused on others or something like that, or there's a work situation or coworkers, something like that is really coming to the forefront. There may be an issue that you're trying to resolve or a challenge that you're trying to overcome. And it could really shake you out of some stubbornness, some stubborn beliefs or a stubborn comfort zone or point of view that has really been holding you back. And we also have a lot of this energy, you know, a lot of these transits this month happening in your seventh house, your opposite sign of Pisces. So this is your relationship sector, your significant relationships in your life, your partner, your significant other, you know, close people, close friends, etc. And so this is going to be a major time of healing certain things, but it can also be a time where there are some unexpected uh, transformations that need to occur. Okay, and that's really what I see in your cards here. So so let's get to your cards and then we'll go over some more of your astrology. So we start off with the Fool, which is really interesting because a lot of signs have been getting the Fool this month and it does feel like a brand new energy is really coming in here lately. And so, like I said, you know, what have you got to lose, right? Like, what have you got to lose? What you have to lose is the devil, right? These addictions, these habits, these shadow traits that are getting you nowhere right? And if you keep, you know, this really, these two cards together really remind me of if you keep trying to solve a solution while you're in the same problem, then you're not going to get anywhere, right? Like kind of like the whole insanity thing, you know, if you keep doing the same things um, over and over again and expecting different results, like you're not going to get anywhere. But there's another quote that you can't solve a problem with the same frame of mind that created the problem, right? And so the solution has to come from a different frame of mind. And that is really what I see here for you, Virgo, because a lot of these Aquarian transits that are happening in your sixth house deal with the mind, deal with the mental realm, like I was saying, and they're going to start squaring Uranus in your ninth house of your belief systems, your worldviews, what you hold sacred, what is moral and righteous to you, your your belief systems, you know, all of these things. And it's really going to start putting this, it's really going to start challenging you to get out of these stuck comfort zones to, it's going to start challenging what you think you know. And it's going to ask you to release these stubborn thoughts, these stubborn belief systems that are keeping you trapped, right? That it's like you're, you're doing it to yourself almost, right? Like what, what behaviors or habits, addictions, etc., are you doing to yourself that are holding you back from being where you want to be in your life? Just because it's comfortable, King of Pentacles, right? It's comfortable and it's easy to keep going back and forth. It's easy to keep like, you know, trying to balance, you know, these two things that are not working out rather than letting them go and doing something completely brand new, the fool. And so it's kind of like what you have to lose are these toxic behaviors or these toxic traits within your life that you're clinging to. What are you clinging to? That is what's really coming up this month for you, Virgo. What are you clinging to and what is holding you down, slowing you down, holding you back, 
you know, Venus and Mars are also going to start coming up on Saturn towards the end of the month. And so this is once again, a make or break time. Are you going to keep doing the same things? Are you going to keep like being slowed down by, you know, all of these things? And so it, it definitely like with Saturn, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a drill sergeant. It's And it's been in your sixth house for like the last little over a year now. So you've been probably dealing with a lot of struggles or hardships or obstacles or restrictions in terms of your health, lifestyle, routines, etc. already. And this month can really be a month where you solve some of that, where you start finding solutions or where you feel more motivated to find solutions. But it's also going to be a time where if you are not if you're not doing anything, if you're not acting on these things, if you're not uh, open to a new set of thinking or, or being a little bit more open-minded or trying to reconcile these things, then you could start seeing consequences where maybe you get overwhelmed or maybe next thing you know, you have like this huge workload that you weren't expecting and it completely drains you or, you know, these habits start getting the best of you, you know, something like that. And so, and I'm not trying to scare you. It's not like, you know, oh my God, or else, you know, it's just that Saturn really does kind of kick things up a notch. Like Saturn really does, it's kind of like what goes around comes around and with Saturn. And so that's why I'm saying that. Um, but, you know, for some of you, these could be major lifestyle changes, material changes, um, addictions to material things, material fixes, um, addictions to comfort, addictions to work, etc. Like, you know, being somewhat of a workaholic or trying to juggle more than more than you physically can because, you know, you're not taking care of you. Um, you're not really doing the work on yourself to be able to handle all of these extra things. And so then we get the tower and the death card. And so it looks like there could be some surprising or unexpected backlash from maybe doing too much. So basically, you know, you're going to want to speed up. You're going to want to take on a lot. You're going to think that you can do a lot. But with Venus there, it's like, hey, you have to take care of yourself first, right? You have to Make sure that you're in the right place, that your health is in the right place, that, you know, you are taking care of yourself, that you are, you know, really giving yourself that vitality and what you need um, to be able to do these things, right? And so with, you know, the tower and the death card, it looks like there's an unexpected massive change that comes in, an unexpected metamorphosis where something just breaks, something just is like, you know, yeah, you can't, you can't keep building on top of a unstable foundation, basically. And you really start realizing that this month and you go through this massive transformation, you go through this massive change, you go through this massive metamorphosis, and you're able to start really giving yourself what you need with the Empress here. You're really able to start nourishing yourself. You're really able to start um, figuring out what it is that is going to put you in a state of good health, good pleasure, and and put you in the right state, you know? And this could have somewhat of an effect on your relationship in some way. We do have the lover's card and the empress card, so I do feel like, you know, to a certain extent, some of these things, like I said, could somehow bleed over to your relationship if you're in a relationship, or this could just be you where you know, you are focusing more on worthiness and value and what's really important in your life, you know, self-esteem and, and all of those types of things um, start really coming to the forefront. And what you truly want out of your life, what, what you truly want to build your potential, you know, and all of those types types of things. So it's just, I would say to really, you know, like March is really a month where you're going to be really doing the work on yourself. You're going to be really like into, you know, self-care, self-improvement. And if you're not, or you are too distracted by work or other stuff that is just not, you know, really actually feeding you the nourishment that you need, um, or you're too distracted by, or you're taking on too many responsibilities or too many commitments or, Whatever the case may be, you know, this month is a month of change. It's a month of 
kind of pushing you off the cliff. Like you've been kind of edging towards the cliff, wanting to jump for a while, but this month is like, go, you know, like stop dancing around it. Just fucking go, you know, like do what you need to do, you know, do the things that are, that you know that you need to do for you. You have to like get in that mode. You have to get in that mindset or else you're going to just keep continuing in this trap. You're going to feel trapped. You're going to feel that devil energy, you know? And so it's kind of like a time of like really focusing on yourself and breaking free and liberating yourself from these things that are keeping you trapped, are keeping you held back, you know? And if you're not in a relationship, you know, this could be like, you know, a significant person in your life um, or a motherly figure um, for some of you or, you know, something like that, like a motherly figure or a feminine presence in your life that maybe is, you know, helping you um, with some of these things or with self-care in some way. Uh, Because it, it does look, Virgo, like there is some kind of big change or transition or shift that is occurring in terms of, you know, in terms of your life, in terms of something that needs to change or something that breaks because you've been putting it off for so long or you haven't done the work or whatever the case may be. And so this month is is really, you know, kind of teaching you how to start doing this work that you've been knowing that you need to do, you know? So we also have the spirit of place, which is you know, about every place or every environment kind of having its own energy, its own spirit. Um, But it's also about having authenticity and being authentic to who you are. So I'm going to read you really quick uh, what it says. So it says, our ancient ancestors believed that every place has a spirit looking after it or embodying it, just as we have a soul. The plants, trees, birds, mountains, and rivers have their own essences. When the spirit of place arrives in your reading, it says that the answer to your query is in the overarching overarching theme of your circumstances. Is your question about a struggle? The answer is to relax and let go of your need to control the situation. If your inquiry relates to finding love, then embody love rather than long for it. Once you find the essential truth that underlies your question and then name it, you'll discover the answer you've been seeking. Your greatest power is authenticity. So instead of, you know, thinking too much about it or overanalyzing all the details or, you know, thinking that you need X, Y, and Z, I think it's really about embodiment. You know, it's, it's really about embodying your answer and making it more simple. You know what I mean? Simplifying it down. We also have the card listening, uh, which is about listening more. Once again, instead of thinking like that, you know, it, or having this stubbornness towards, uh, you know, your lifestyle, your day to day life, health, etc. It's like, you know, maybe listening more, opening your mind more, like I was saying before. And then we also have making a choice. And it's really interesting because we also have the two of pinnacles here, like I was talking about. And so it's time, you know, it's time like you're you're at this fork in the road. You can't keep putting it off anymore. And so this month just really feels like you have to you have to make that choice. You have to decide you have to either go all in or just accept, you know, whatever it is that you've been struggling with. And and I really feel like that for you this month, Virgo. So Anyways, um, other than that, astrologically, we have a Pisces new moon on the second in your seventh house sector. Um, This is a really interesting new moon as it's conjunct Jupiter. So this could definitely be bringing new beginnings over the next couple weeks into your relationship um, and into your relationships in general. Uh, And then we also have Mars and Venus moving into your sixth house, as I kind of said before, which is really going to intensify that topic of health, wellness, your lifestyle, day-to-day schedules and routines, and, you know, what you're doing on a day-to-day basis to keep up with yourself or any issues that you're having that are dragging you down or pulling you down. Uh, We also have uh, Mercury, your ruling planet, moving into Pisces on the 9th, and so communication this month may be a little difficult for you Virgo it may be difficult to grasp the details or the answers or the solutions as easily as you normally can because Pisces is your opposite sign and Mercury does not like to be in Pisces and Mercury is your ruling planet so this month it may not be so much about 
talking or so much about like finding the little details or, or you know grasping on to those little little things it may be a little bit more about listening and feeling and you know understanding as you go and experience rather than having things all planned out which i know can be pretty difficult for you um you know we're we're in your opposite signs season you know this is the sign that is your complete opposite and so this month can feel a little emotionally overwhelming a little odd or a little different you know and so it's really really important that you as much as possible try to just relax and let go of the nitty-gritty stuff right like just go with the flow as much as possible like really remind yourself like okay is it really this important is it really all that like do i really need to does it really need to be perfect does this really need to be the way that i think it should be like maybe it's maybe it's how it's supposed to be maybe it's happening for a purpose you know on the 18th we have a full moon in your sign which is going to be kind of like a reintegration of you um, and it's going to feel like you're a little bit more back to yourself it could also be uh, kind of like a culmination point of you know yourself in some way or something in your life and so i'm going to do a whole separate video on that uh, and then towards the end of the month around the 20th the sun will move into aries and there will be more of a shift on your shared resources finances and uh what you want in terms of your financial goals and affairs, investments, et cetera, what you need to take care of in terms of those things. And then uh, towards the end of the month as well, your ruling planet Mercury will move into Aries as well, which will even more be about the focus of shared finances and what you want in terms of money and resources. And um, yeah, that is basically it. Uh, also towards the end of the month, Venus will start to conjunct Saturn and Mars will get close to conjuncting Saturn. And so towards the end of the month, there could be more of a serious tone in terms of your work, lifestyle, health, and day-to-day -day routine. So keep an eye out for that towards the end of the month. So that's what I'm getting for you, Virgo. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated for you. If you stayed all the way through, comment hashtag Virgo gang down below. And yeah, I love you guys. I will see you guys in my other videos. What is up, my lovely Librans? Welcome to your reading for March 2022. This will resonate most if you are a Libra rising, so let's get into it. So Libra, I feel here that you may be in a time of instability or a time where you feel a little bit like you are out of control of a situation in your life and that maybe even that situation feels unfair uh, to some of you. I also see here that March is really about embracing your uniqueness, embracing who you are and validating yourself rather than looking for validation elsewhere or waiting on other people to validate you. And I feel like a lot of the issues that you may be experiencing in March are actually coming from a place of maybe wanting that external validation or maybe expecting other people to see your worth when really it's that's actually just a symptom of a, a deeper issue within you. Because the deeper issue within you is that you have to see your worth. You have to embody the person that you are. You have to be authentic to yourself. And the reason I'm saying this is because we have a lot of Aquarian and Pisces energy, which for you, if you're a Libra rising, is your fifth and your sixth whole sign house. And Aquarius in your fifth house really speaks to you embracing self-expression, embracing your own unique and authentic self-expression, even if it's weird, quirky, or different, even if other people aren't always on the same page or don't always get it. And really just embracing that, embodying that, you know, not waiting for external validation to embody this. You know, if you're passionate about something that's strange or different, or you have a romantic interest that's strange or different, or something that you love to do, or different ways that, that you are, your self-expression, you know, plays out in is strange or different or unique, you know, there's nothing wrong with that and that's okay. And I feel like March is a month where maybe you're feeling a little bit like, you know, an underdog in some ways, or you're feeling not heard, or you're feeling like um, what you love is different and so therefore other people are not maybe on the same board or you wish other people were on the, on the same page as you and they're just not, you know? And so March is, kind of a time where you can get back to those unique 
uh, extraordinary things that make you different, right? Where you can get back to the things that give you passion, even if they're strange or even if they're unique, even if they're quirky or even if others don't quite understand. Uh, because this is what is going to help you thrive in the month of March, okay? Really getting back to those things that just make you feel good. And that may involve some solitude on your part. That may involve you going a little bit within or you retreating, you know, now is not really the time to be like out and trying to, you know, do a bunch of stuff like out in the spotlight. It's more so of a time of getting back to what's important to you, getting back to those things that really make your heart sing, those things that really give you some kind of spark that inspire you in some way. And you may be feeling in March like you really have like a calling to help or serve others. Um, or you may be feeling like, you know, things are so out of your control that you're kind of just waiting for someone to come in and change it, or you're waiting on something to happen to change it. And I'm one of the messages I'm really getting for you with this rescue card here is that it's really important to rescue yourself this month. Like you are your savior this month. You are your hero this month. And so the sooner that you start realizing that and embodying that and practicing that, the sooner like you will feel better uh, this on a month like this. And I also feel like with rescue that this could be a time where you're going through some things involving friends or your social life and things not playing out how you originally wanted them to, or there could be a trouble with relating in your social life in some way. And so this could be a month that's really like, hey, maybe you need to take a step back instead of trying to rescue other people or instead of trying to save them from something, maybe you need to save yourself, right? There's a lot of mirroring going on this month that you may not be able to see right away because it's a lot of subconscious stuff that's coming up for you, Libra. Like I said, if you are experiencing a lot of out of control issues, it could be coming from a deeper issue of some self-worth or self-esteem stuff that needs to be addressed. Your ruling planet Venus is traveling with Mars um, and it's going to move into the sign of Aquarius on March 6th and it's going to be there basically uh, for the rest of the month of March and so it's going to be a time where you're getting a little bit more serious and where you may be feeling a little bit different or a little bit like abnormal from other people in your life and that is fine. It's so, so important for you to embrace that but to do that you're going to have to retreat a little bit. We have the Wheel of Fortune and the Eight of Cups. And so there are some things that you're going to have to kind of back up from. Um, some of the stuff that's out of your control, some of the things that you're powerless over, you're going to have to retreat from. You're gonna have to walk away from for a little bit. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have to walk away for, for forever, you know, but you're gonna have to walk away for a little bit because like I said, there's a lot of mirroring going on and there's a lot of things happening that could seem a little bit unfair or um, unequal in some way with justice reversed here and the king of swords coming up here. It's like there could be an unjust or unfair situation that you're dealing with where you're not really feeling on the same page or you're not feeling heard or you feel like one side isn't being shown in some way. And with the king of swords here, it kind of feels like that's just how it is like it may not make logical sense to you but it does to others and so it's kind of like ah what do i do with this you know and i feel like temperance is here saying that it's time to slow down it's time to moderate it's time to really decipher and discern if this is important enough for you or if this is mirroring something else within you and it's time to recollect yourself and get back into the things that are important to you, the things that you are passionate about, those things that feel like, you know, like your heart loves, you know, it's time to get back to your heart space and your creative self-expression, your unique self-expression and balance out whatever else is going on with this, with authenticity, with being true to yourself, with embodiment, with finding your pleasure, with finding fun in your own unique ways. And I really feel like when you can integrate that 
a lot of this other stuff starts to fade because you come into this place of your own unique and authentic energy, your own unique power, and you start vibrating on that level and you are able to move forward in a whole new way. You're able to go through a metamorphosis, you know? And so I feel like for some of you guys, maybe not all of you guys, parts of this month could kind of feel like, like you're on the bottom of the wheel waiting to come back up right? Like you're like, damn, like there's so much chaos or there's so much shit that's out of my control right now. And I don't really feel appreciated or validated for who I am. And, you know, there's something unfair going on here. And I just am not sure how to deal with this. Well, temperance is saying it's time to take a step back. It's first you have to get right with you. You know, this is a month where you have to take a step back, retreat, you know, get back in touch with who you are in your own heart, your own fire within your own passions, all of that. And that is where you start to find the answer in March, Libra. So anyways, um, other than that, in March, uh, like I said, you have a lot of sixth house energy too in Pisces. So this could be bringing up where you kind of feel victimized to some extent or where you are you know, where you need to add or, um, you know, add in more spirituality and more of a connection to your own spirituality, your intuition, things that help you to flow more, things like, you know, adding in energy and adding in that, that sense of divinity into your day-to-day -day life, your lifestyle, your day-to-day -day routines, your work, you know, that is going to be so, so important to you for you this month. Self-care, you know, maintenance, self-maintenance, like really doing the work of healing to get back to who you are and to get back to a place of flowing with the energy rather than against it with all this Piscean energy. And we also have Jupiter and Neptune there. And so this could be shining a light on some things that maybe you haven't been seeing clearly in terms of work, habits, your lifestyle, health, etc. Um, so that could be it too. Those could be some things coming up as well or where you need to do more or where you've been kind of like romanticizing or fantasizing about something in, the, in that area of life that may not be exactly what you thought it was, right? So this month can be somewhat of a reality check in that sense where maybe you've been waiting on something to get better that is, you know what I mean? Like maybe you've been waiting on like a work situation to get better and you've been like, telling yourself all of these things, but then this month you realize like, wait, this is actually like not what I really want. Like when you actually check in with your soul and get to your own core energy, you start realizing what it is that you truly want, what it is that you truly desire. And then things start changing because you start looking at things differently. And that's really what I see for you this month, Libra. We also have a Virgo full moon on the 18th, which is happening in your 12th house. So that could definitely be a time where you are feeling a little bit more secluded, where you are retreating a lot more, working on your own health and taking care of yourself and releasing anything that you need to release. It could be a time of letting go of something or some kind of ending because it's happening in your 12th house, but I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, and then towards the end of the month, after the 20th, the sun will move into Aries, which is your seventh house sector. So this will bring up a lot of relationship topics after the 20th. So, and it will bring a whole lot of new beginnings in terms of your relationship life um, and your significant relationships. And that will become a very main, big focus uh, by the end of the month. And then on the 28th, uh, Venus will start to conjunct Saturn in your fifth house. So this could definitely be more of a serious talk or a serious, um, <laughs> some serious stuff coming up around, you know, your passions, yourself, what you want, what you desire. Also topics of children and, you know, dating, fun, etc. This could definitely be bringing up something more serious or something that you want that's more serious um, in some way. So watch out for that at the end of the month. So. Anyways, that is what I'm seeing for you guys, Libra. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback and it would really, really help me out if you did that. Uh, also, if you stayed all the way to this point, comment hashtag Libra gang down below and let me know. And yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye.
What's up, Scorpio? So the party is on and popping this month for you guys. Um, as I talked about in the 2022 year ahead horoscopes, like this time of 2022 is like insane for you guys. You have so much going on in your fifth house if you're a Scorpio rising, um, with it being Pisces season with Jupiter and Neptune there. And so, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Um, this is a lot of really hopeful and optimistic energy, uh, you know, really just kind of letting go and releasing into pleasure and creativity and intuition or spirituality. But this can also have a certain level of escapism to it. And so this could bring up things that you are over romanticizing or that you have been somewhat delusional about or not seeing clearly or that you've been trying to escape. Um, and so you do want to watch out for that energy in the month of March as it definitely can be there. If you go through a challenge, it can feel very easy to want to just escape or want to just avoid or run away or, you know, something like that. And so you do have to watch out for that energy. We also have a shit ton of Aquarius energy in your fourth house of home, family, your roots, your past, your childhood, parents, your foundation, your personal life. And so it could feel like you are going through a lot in terms of that you know there could be a lot of burdens from the past with the ten of wands being your first card here that you've been kind of noticing for a while or that you've been aware of for a while that start to come up this month and the reason that they're coming up is because they're looking to be reconciled somewhere along the lines you have been feeling kind of outcasted or like the underdog in your family and your personal life or with your living situation or maybe you've been feeling like you know you haven't been treated right or you've been the one having to carry some kind of burden and this month is asking you to really take a look at this to really integrate this and to maybe make some really big changes you know to maybe triumph over this but Here's the thing, you know, with Scorpio, and I have like a lot of Scorpio in my chart, so just hear me out for a second. Um, I know I, I really truly understand Scorpio in a lot of ways, but um, with Scorpio, because Scorpio is a feminine water sign ruled by Mars, a masculine planet, uh, it's a little bit different than the other water signs, you know? And with Scorpio, there can be a tendency to hide perceived weakness or hide perceived vulnerabilities out of you know not wanting to show it or wanting to keep up this kind of like secretive secretive or mysterious vibe um because it is a feminine sign it's and with a masculine planet a planet that deals with conflict and protection and all of that it really plays out more on the protective end and so with that being said scorpio a lot of what I see here in your cards is really facing some of these illusions or some of these shadow aspects of your childhood where maybe, you know, I kind of feel here like maybe as a child you weren't trusted or maybe as a child like you weren't able to fully embody or embrace um, the innocence of your childhood in some way. Uh, you know, maybe you were really young and something happened or there was some kind of trauma or something like that. And some of that could come up this month. Maybe not exactly the situation itself for some of you. For some of you, it could just be like certain behaviors or instincts or like, you know, subconscious patterns that you fall into with the devil card and the moon card here. Like lies that you've been telling yourself or lies that you've been told or that you've been conditioned to believe about yourself are really coming to the forefront this month. And with that being said, there can be a certain level of needing to put on this like, oh, I'm fine, I got it, it's not a big deal, or not really be honest with yourself or be honest with others about these vulnerabilities or about these traumas or about these you know, intense emotional situations that you're going through and to just kind of wanna shake it off or try to triumph over it, but this month is kind of like, no. No, <laughs> can't do that, you know, um, because actually the strength that you are exerting or that you are masking over it, the strength, the real strength comes from facing these things, from being vulnerable, from 
you know, trusting in yourself and trusting in the people around you that you likely know by now that you can trust, you know, like the people in your life that you know that you can trust, the people in your life that have integrity and all of that, like by putting yourself out there, that is the strong thing to do. And that is the thing that is actually going to help you heal and help you embrace strength and embrace confidence instead of just like putting on this mask of strength and confidence, you know, because that's a lot of work, you know, and I get it because I used to be the same way. Um, and I have a lot in Scorpio. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I feel like this month is really like facing some deep truths that you've been hiding from yourself or hiding from others. And it's coming up because Venus and Mars are moving through your fourth house and Venus wants to reconcile. It wants to bring things together. It wants to solve these things. It wants to harmonize these things, you know, and with all this energy and your fifth house in Pisces, this is also about integration and transcendence and healing these inner child wounds, you know, healing this stuff. And so March is a month for you, Scorpio, that is really stepping into your true power and your true strength, which is allowing yourself to feel on a deep level, not just personally or secretively, but vulnerably, allowing yourself to put yourself out there allowing yourself to be honest with yourself and with the people closest to you about what is going on behind the scenes or about how you're feeling emotionally or about these vicious circles or patterns or toxic traits or addictions or behaviors or whatever the whatever it may be allowing yourself to be honest about it and put it out there and not try to hide it or you know act a certain way when that's really not how you feel you know, because that just keeps you trapped. That just keeps you trapped in the same old patterns of distrust and, you know, disillusion and, and all of those types of things. And it just keeps you carrying this burden that it doesn't seem to me that you can carry anymore. And by continuing to like fall back into that pattern of like trying to protect this burden, which is basically what you're trying to do. You're trying to protect these issues instead of facing them head on and allowing yourself to fully feel them, allowing yourself to transcend them, allowing yourself to move through them, allowing yourself to face them. And so that I think is what is going to be a really big theme for you in the month of March, uh, Scorpio. So, but other than that, you know, I feel like you have a lot of help here with all of this fifth house energy. It could be really bringing up a lot of love and romance into your life. It could be bringing up a lot of fun and childlike energy and just like, you know, optimism and faith. But you just want to be careful that you don't get too carried away in that to where you are escaping issues or, you know, being kind of influenced or getting into escapism that ends up leading to addictions or toxic behaviors, etc. So you do want to kind of be careful of that because there is this energy of like past habits resurfacing or past toxic behaviors coming up. And it's like, you can do the same thing you've always done and get the same thing you've always got and, you know, shake things up for the hell of it because you want some kind of change or because you get off on that kind of chaos or whatever the case may be, but it's not going to be fulfilling. It's not going to fulfill you. You know, with the North Node in your opposite sign of Taurus, it's like actually deeply within, you're kind of seeking comfort. You're kind of seeking stability. You're kind of seeking security. And so, and to get to that, you have to resolve these deeper shadow traits within yourself, these shadow behaviors, these subconscious behaviors within yourself, where you try to control or shake up or manipulate or whatever the case may be, you know, for different ones of you, it's like, no, you have to like face these, you have to feel these, you have to let go of the illusionment, you know, and so Anyways, um, with that being said, we also will have Venus and Mars in your fourth, like I said, squaring Uranus mid-month in your seventh. And so this could definitely bring up a lot of shakeups in terms of your personal life, your past, your childhood, your home life, your living situation, your roots, your family, and some challenges with your relationship or with a relationship or with significant relationships in your life. 
Um, maybe it could be like, you know, um, a, like a, a family situation that, you know, is, is somehow affecting your relationship or a relationship that is affecting your personal life or something like that. Um, it, you know, it doesn't even have to be a romantic partner. It could just be a friendship or, you know, how you look at relationships in general, or maybe a view that you have on relationships or something that came from your past or trauma or your childhood or, you know, whatever. Um, and so this area of your chart or of your life could really go through some changes or some challenges or upheaval in the middle of March. But once again, I think this is coming up for it to be resolved, for you to be able to resolve something, to settle something once and for all, instead of continuing to, you know, go back and forth with like, oh no, I want freedom and liberation. And then like, oh no, like I want family and my home life and my personal life or whatever the case may be for different ones of you. So that's something else that's happening. Uh, we also have a Virgo full moon on the 18th, which is in your 11th house of friends and family, or not friends and family, just friends, friends and alliances um, and ambitions. So there could be a culmination point happening around that time with those topics in your life. But I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that. Towards the end of the month, um, from the 20th onward, the moon will, or not the moon, the sun will move into Aries in your sixth house. So there may be more of a focus towards physical day-to-day -day activity, your work life, your routines, your health, things like that. And um, yeah, towards the end of the month, Venus is going to come up on Saturn in your fourth house, as will Mars. So around the 28th, you could start to feel this. And this may bring up some serious topics or commitments in terms of your personal life, your home, your family, uh, you know, some serious relationship stuff in terms of home, your personal life and family where it's kind of like, okay, what are we doing? What's going on? What do we want? You know, kind of thing. And so, so yeah, that is what I'm seeing for you for the month of March, Scorpio. Definitely let me know down below if this resonates for you. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. If you stayed all the way through, comment hashtag Scorpio gang down below as well and let me know that you stayed and yeah i love you guys i will see you guys in my other videos bye what is up sagittarius and welcome to your march 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead let's go ahead and get into it uh honestly your tarot cards are surprising me a little bit not necessarily what i was expecting but we'll talk about it so March is a month, astrologically speaking, where you've been, okay, so let's start off here. You've been going through a lot of intense shit in terms of money, what you value, resources, you know, you've been going through a lot of intensity in that regard and, you know, what's really important to you and possibly power dynamics and lessons of integrity, et cetera. And so moving into March, we're kind of in this time where that period is ending, but a lot of planets are going to be moving into Aquarius. And then we also have a lot going on in Pisces, which is your third and your fourth house. And so this is really about the environments that you are around, the places that you are around, and also your personal life, your home and your family. Now, there still can be a theme of like money and resources and all of that as Saturn does rule your second house and is in your third house and has some transits this month. So it's, it's definitely interesting. So um, there could be a pretty big focus on your personal life, your home life. This could be a time where you're really wanting to expand or, you know, progress in terms of where you live, your environment, your home, your family, your living situation. Um, so that could be something. But in your cards here, I see a certain level of struggle with other people or even like conflict with other people. It could be happening at work or with coworkers or something like that. I mean, you do have the North Node in your sixth house of work and your day-to-day -day routines and lifestyles, but I do see like a certain level of power dynamics here in your cards and kind of this like back and forth or, you know, feeling like you have to compete with maybe somebody else in your life or other people in your life. And so, yeah, it's really interesting and it kind of may be feeling like a futile situation for you, Sagittarius. We have the Five of Wands coming up here and the Five of Swords. So definitely some kind of conflict or struggle that you could be dealing with. And then we have the Three of Pentacles, which tells me that it could be a work situation or a project or 
something like that where it's like you're working with other people or coworkers or something like that and it just seems like a struggle or like something's like futile or not necessarily fair. We also have the Six of Cups here. Um, this could be a month where you're feeling very nostalgic or you're reflecting on the past or your childhood a lot with all this Piscean energy in your fourth house. You know, you could be thinking about how you grew up or there could be just a lot of memories coming up for you. And then we also have the Seven of Cups. So you could be really kind of reflecting on the choices that you've made that have gotten you to where you're at and how all that came about. You could just really be reflecting on your life this month and what you want out of life that's the thing because we have the ten of pinnacles here and so it's kind of like what do you want to establish for yourself what roots do you want to lay down what foundation do you want to lay down because i really feel here with the tower um coming after the ten of of pinnacles that maybe you're kind of sick of having an unstable home life or an unstable uh, life in general in terms of your living situation or where you live or your roots or you know whatever the case may be and it's kind of like you know what like I want to break free of this family pattern or this generational karma or whatever the case may be like and you may be feeling like I kind of feel like there may be a certain level of deception here for some of you Sagittarius because we did get the seven of wands flipped out when I was like still shuffling your cards but I didn't take it because I didn't really I hadn't really connected to your energy all the way yet I mean I was thinking about you but I wasn't like connected to you just yet but it could be it could have really been your card now that I'm like looking at this like and we also have the wizard of awareness here uh which really tells me that this is a month that is really pulling in your awareness it's really focused on your surroundings what's going on around you the places you want to go like maybe you know doing certain things like getting out of the house more and doing certain things around your area or in your community but I'm gonna read you what this card says really quick, so bear with. It says, your soul knows best, be still and observe. Mindfulness is about being observant and remaining neutral about what goes on in the world around you. This applies to the environment within you too. If you struggle inside yourself, stepping into an observer position gives you a new powerful perspective that neutralizes any discomfort or overexcitement. You have the capacity to see things clearly now unencumbered by opinion or desire wearing the world as a loose garment requires you to adopt a sense of nothing that rec that happens to you is personal people come and go experiences evolve from one state to another and a continual shifting and change no matter how much you want things to stay the same the wizard of awareness asks you to give up your need to define or limit what you're experiencing now it's all good let it be and watch the miracle unfold without any direct influence from you. So I kind of feel like, you know, Sag, you could be desiring a specific outcome or really focused on something external to you, focused on something going on outside of you that's really pulling in your attention and that has you feeling confrontational or conflicted or defeated or powerless in some way. And so this could be a time where it's like, bring it back to your surroundings, bring it back to your reality, bring it back to what's going on right here, right now, and try to get into a neutral position. Practice neutrality with things. Don't try to define or pick a side or, you know, whatever just yet. Don't try to judge things just yet. You could be feeling, I feel like some of you guys may be a little bit pulled into a lot of things that are going on, whether around you or in your life or in the world or et cetera. And it's really been distracting you as you've been really learning about maybe different things going on that really are disturbing for you um, that you didn't know, or as you have been kind of influenced by certain information or certain things. And that's another thing, you know, with all of this, with all these planets moving through your third, this is going to be like information overload. It's going to be a lot a lot of focus on information and learning and talking and like communication and the mind and so it's going to be a time where you really really are going to have to practice a sense of awareness and being more observant being more neutral looking at things from a distance and kind of detaching and not putting a certain attachment or a label on information or things that you learn right away we also have the education card which once again tells me you know this is a time where 
there's a lot of information, there's a lot of new things that you could be learning or a lot of new things that you could be perceiving or things that you could be kind of perceiving in a different way, you know? Uh, and then we also have listening. And so I think that it's also important to kind of take a step back and listen when you're in that observer position instead of trying to assert your opinion. You know, with, with Mars moving in your third, it's gonna be really easy to wanna assert your opinion and want things to be a certain way and want people to think a certain way and like try to get people to think a certain way. And Venus is there though. So it's kind of like, you know, that, that frustration like is not going to satisfy you. Um, and so it's going to be a time of really pulling back and kind of like resolving these issues within yourself, resolving that frustration within you instead of just trying to resolve it by getting others to do something, you know. Um, and then also Venus and Mars will be squaring Uranus in your sixth house of work and your day-to-day -day lifestyle and, you know, the things that you do to, to stay in good health or to have the lifestyle that you want to have. Um, so with Venus and Mars squaring Uranus in your or in your sixth house, this could definitely be a time where there are some conflicts or some verbal disagreements within your workspace or with coworkers, et cetera. So you wanna watch out for that like mid month where things could get a little shaken up there um, or there could be, you know, like you could feel like you want things one way, but there could be other people breaking the rules or doing them a different way and it could be like, it could bring some conflict. So you do wanna be careful of that. You wanna be careful of distractions this month as well. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Sag. Um, other than that, uh, this Pisces energy is really beautiful for you in the fourth house though. So yes, there can be some challenge or struggle within that third house sector, which isn't that crazy, but the Pisces fourth house for you is really nice. It's a great time to meditate. It's a great time to heal old wounds, to, you know, transcend past issues or past struggles or, you know, family, um, you know, family issues, etc. And so that is really, really awesome for you guys. So that is what I'm seeing for you guys, Sagittarius. Let me know down below if any of those messages resonated for you and comment Sag, hashtag Sag gang down below if you watch this whole reading. And and yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Alrighty, Capricorn. Welcome to your March 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. So Capricorn, for the month of March, I really see this month being a lot about your money, what's important to you, your finances, what you are putting your time and energy into, your priorities. That is really kind of the the big thing for March, but also your environments and you know what you're doing like on a day to day basis and organizing your life a little bit more, your lifestyle and you know who you're surrounding yourself with, the places that you're going and what you're doing. There could be kind of like a need to learn or to have fun or to get out more, to travel around a little bit more, to do certain things, to get out of the house, etc. A little bit more in March. But there's also this intense focus on money and your priorities and so it's kind of going back and forth where it's like oh i feel like i need to be focused on my priorities but i also like want to go to this event with these people or i want to go do this thing you know so it's kind of going back and forth and i think you're really re-evaluating your dreams this month you're really re-evaluating your priorities what's important to you and what you want you know, because I think for a long time, maybe you've been um, kind of not seeing things clearly, like you've been maybe spending more than you like meant to or that you that you thought, you know, it's like there's not been something that's been very clear with money or there's been something that's been kind of in the shadows or something like that with the give giving and receiving of money uh, in your life. And so this could be a time um, where topics of trust or topics of giving and receiving are being brought up for you and where you're really kind of reevaluating your own power and your own wealth and your self-worth and things like this and how, like we talked about kind of last month, how you may tie material things and money and all of that into your self-worth. But there's also a very strong intuitive kind of insight here where you could be doing something more intuitive with business, work, money, etc. with the moon here. 
But I also want to say that, you know, to really watch this month because not everything involving money and business, etc., may be what it appears. Um, for some of you, like I said, this could be something more intuitive that you're doing uh, related to money or business or something like that, or it could be something more instinctual. But for others of you, this could be something that is kind of illusory, that maybe you're not 100% seeing clearly. Um, so I would watch out for that, but we do have the high priestess kind of backing this up. Like there may be like an inner knowing happening this month and it's really important to trust that. It's, it's kind of like you're getting really honest with yourself about some things in your life involving money, finance, and business and involving your priorities in general, you know, involving what is important to you and where you're headed, where you're going. Um, and I think that it's really important to kind of build this reliance on this inner knowing on the internal you rather than the external you, right? Um, to build this kind of sense of reliance on your intuition and on all these different parts of you, like not just the part of you that wants to be seen for material things or wants to be known or whatever the case, you know, I'm just like, like giving examples, but, um, but also all these other parts of you, the, the more internal or deeper parts of you as well, you know, don't be scared to show those. But I also feel like there's kind of like a sense of fear here, you know, with the nine of swords, there could be a sense of fear surrounding, you know, financial wealth or surrounding work or surrounding business or something like mid month, um, you know, because we're going to have the Venus Mars uh, conjunction squaring Uranus and your fifth. And so I feel like this is really kind of pushing you to face certain fears that you have. Um, involving certain priorities in your life, involving money or material things or resources or whatever the case, it's really pushing you to go inward and to investigate how you really feel deep down, right? Um, and I don't know why the word trust keeps coming up. I don't know, maybe it's self-trust. It's kind of what I'm feeling, but I mean, it could be trust of, you know, somebody else in your life, but I just keep like getting the word trust. But I really feel like this month you're going inward and you're maybe retreating or taking a step back. You're maybe, you know, secluding yourself a little bit more with the hermit here and really like getting back to yourself. I really feel like that's going to be like this month is really going to push you to really reevaluate some of the things in your life. So um, we also have the dry desert card, which I want to read to you really quick. So just bear with. Um, so the dry desert, dig deep for inspiration and truth. Now is the time to become resilient and adaptable. Is your life presenting you with opportunities that seem to yield nothing? Have your ideas dried up? Does it feel like you're on an endless journey through a dry, hot desert, lifeless desert? This card reminds you that there are times when you're meant to become resilient as you journey through harsher circumstances. You're being, you're being required to conser conserve your energy until after consistent effort, you reach the oasis you're looking for. And that's kind of what I see here, really conserving your energy with the high priestess, the uh, prince of disc or the, you know, uh, prince of pinnacles. Um, but the nine of swords is like scared to do it, right? It's like you're scared. It's like, oh my God, if I stop, if I go inward, you know, what does that mean, you know, or something like that. So it says, consider the creatures that live in these conditions. They've adapted to thrive in spite of the outer environment. In a desert, water essential for life can be found deep underground. Go within yourself now. Find your truth here. Let spirit sustain you while you locate the real source. Whatever it is you're asking about will not be found in the conditions you're in until you move past the surface of things and choose to do the real work and discover the answers deep within you. High Priestess. <laughs> like you know what you need to do Capricorn this month like you have an inkling you have these instincts of like what you need to do it's a matter of doing it right it's a matter of like breaking that momentum you've been in for so long and taking a step back and reevaluating. anyways um this may not seem like the most productive time but looks are deceiving this is more important this is a more important place to find what's truly right for you and I also want to read you the Field of Dreams card, which you also got for this month. So 
the field of dreams. Uh, are your dreams your own or are they really someone else's? Have you chased money, possessions, or prestige? Have you placed security above fulfillment? Has approval seeking played a major role in your motivation to succeed? This is the time for you to assess the validity of your dreams, your talents, and your willingness to be a channel for inspiration and creativity. Don't be afraid to enter the field of dreams for you can always clear the ground for new and better things to grow. Nature has a way of self-correcting if you're willing to act with authenticity. The power to create is inside of you. And I just feel like that's a really powerful message here because I really feel that in your reading. Like, are your dreams even your own or are they someone else's? That's something to really think about. Are they societies? Are they your parents? You know, like, uh, like, uh, is this really what you want? You know, and I feel like this is a month that's really reevaluating this. Like, it's like, whoa, hold on. What am I doing? Where am I going? Like, and maybe some of you have already been kind of playing with this, but maybe you haven't quite figured it out yet, or maybe it's, it's still kind of up in the air. But either way, I feel like this month is pushing you into solitude to figure this out, to figure out what you really want deep inside of you, to figure out those answers deep inside of you so you can move forward in a way that is more authentic to you, that is more true to you, that feels more that feels more like you and that feels more easy flowing instead of so like you know robotic or difficult you know like what do you really want what are your priorities you know even at the bottom we have the hanged man you know so it's kind of like a time of really reevaluating something um and you may have to make some small sacrifices to do that but it's going to be okay like you're going to get through it and so i feel like you really are finding answers this month capricorn i feel like this is a month about really uh, embracing inner silence and embracing an internal knowing, um, embracing your intuition, the the parts that you usually neglect or the parts of you that you usually put off, you know, like you can find a time to get out of this constant go, 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 or you can find the time to uh, reprioritize, you know, um, I, I know you can. So anyways, um, other than that, astrologically, like I said, we have Venus and Mars traveling through Aquarius this month, which is your second house of priorities and money and resources, what you need that supports you and the life that you want to have. And so all of those things are going to be really big this month. You're going to be really reconciling these things, really trying to come back into some kind of order with these things. But there may be some shakeups like mid-month with Uranus and your fifth. Um, that come from like, you know, once again, what do you want? What are you passionate about? Your dating life, your romantic life, pleasure, like where do you make time for that? The North Node is here, you know, it's kind of like, what do you really desire? You know, and that could be really changing, which really kind of challenges your priorities and your, your resources in some way. Um, and that's going to be more mid-month, like from like the 16th to like the 22nd, you'll really be feeling that. Um, and then also, though, we have all this beautiful, lovely Pisces energies in the third, um, in your third, which is really about your environment, your surroundings, your day-to-day -day activities, your day-to-day -day schedules, the places you frequent on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is great for connecting with your surroundings and those around you and doing different things, going to different events, you know, um, things like that. So you could really be doing that this month, which would be great for you to get out and connect and do that. But there's still kind of this stress in terms of priorities and, and you know, what you feel you need um, in your life. And so so that will definitely be something that you're, you're still reconciling, though, throughout basically the whole month. And then we have a Virgo full moon in your ninth. And this is going to be a time of really reevaluating your belief systems and uh, seeing things from a new way or getting back in touch with what you believe and what's sacred to you. And then after that, the sun will move into Aries on the 20th of March, and we will finish out March with the sun in Aries in your fourth, which will bring a focus more inward and towards inward and personal matters, your personal life, your living situation. And then um, towards the end of the month, we will also have Venus coming into her conjunction with Saturn around the 28th, which will be in your second house. So this could be kind of a serious time where you're really like, 
a serious time for money and finances and your financial affairs and your priorities. Like that definitely is kind of like a culmination point with that towards the end of the month where you're like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm not doing. And you're either making some kind of big financial commitment or you are, um, you know, making some changes in some ways. So anyways, Capricorn, that is what I see for you for March, 2022. Definitely let me know down below if any of these messages resonated, feel free to come back and watch throughout the month or at the end of the month to see if it all resonated. Uh, comment down below, hashtag Capricorn gang, if you watch this all the way through. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. All right, Aquarius, welcome to your March 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. Let's get into your reading. So Aquarius, March for you is very interesting. We have a lot going on in your sign still. Venus and Mars are moving into your sign on March 6th, and this is a big deal. Um, you are going to be definitely feeling that energy in terms of who you are, your identity, what you're wanting to start, things that you're wanting to initiate, what you're wanting to do, your potential. You're going to be feeling a lot more energy than usual. You're going to be feeling very dedicated and even possibly a little controversial, you know, with Mars and Venus there. Um, but it may not be a bad thing. You know, you may be feeling like just extremely dedicated to something and really uh, you know, putting a lot of energy towards bringing in something new into your life. And you just may be feeling more uh, ambitious than usual. And, you know, that's amazing because Mars and Venus have been with Pluto in the sign right before yours and your 12th. So there's probably been a lot of releasing and letting go and endings and breakthroughs that have happened the first couple of months of uh, 2022 so far that you've had to deal with, you know, that have been going on behind the scenes or that you've had to let go of in some way. And so now with these two planets moving into your sign, it's like you can finally move forward. You can finally initiate after March 6th you're going to be really feeling that forward momentum and you're going to be really wanting to take action on your desires and the things that give you pleasure, the things that you want in life. And you're going to be really, I think, dedicated to some kind of change. We have the full card here, which has been coming up for a lot of the signs, but I think it's really, really fitting for your sign because it is kind of like a new you, a new beginning. You're kind of like just ready to go. You're ready to like go on a new path. You're, you're ready to take that risk. Like, and yeah, it's just like this feeling of new beginnings and newness in the air. And then we also have the eight of pinnacles. So this also tells me you're going to be feeling extremely dedicated to something new. You're going to be working on something or really putting your energy into building something or doing something with yourself or in your life just in general. And so now what's also really interesting is we have a lot of Piscean transits this month, which is your second house of priorities, resources, money, and finances. And so there can be a lot of encouragement in this area. You can really see a lot of expansion or growth in this area. It can feel, you know, there can be like a focus on a lot of fulfillment in this area where you are, you know, wanting to expand in terms of your money, your finances, your resources. With the south node in the 10th house for you, you there could be a lot of focusing on work or career and where you want to be in life you know like where you want to go what you want to do what do you want to be known for all of those types of things but there can also be kind of a focus on home and family and the foundation and the personal life as well and kind of like through the middle of the month mars and venus are going to start squaring uranus in your fourth house and so there could somewhat be this challenge of something that you desire or something that you want or you trying to just be you or you trying to do something that somehow has some kind of backlash in your home, your personal life, your family, something like that, or it causes some kind of disruption uh, to some degree or it causes some kind of shake up. And so, you know, or it causes you to maybe have to upgrade to maybe face some kind of change. And we do have the death card coming up next here, which you know, tells me that there could be some kind of change that needs to be made, that you could be dedicated to making some kind of change happen or facing some kind of fear or facing some kind of change this month. And we do have strength at the bottom of the deck followed by the 10 of wands. So I really do think that, you know, maybe you're getting the strength to finally release some burdens. Maybe you're getting the strength to finally face some things that need to be changed in your life this month, Aquarius. 
We also have the Four of Swords, so I think it's going to be important to kind of remember to rest this month to remember not to burn yourself out too much with Mars in your sign because Saturn's in your sign too. And so there can be consequences for exerting too much or doing too much, you know, it can get exhausting very easily. And so I think when you're able to rest, when you're able to focus on the things that give you pleasure, when you're able to find moderation and a balance with temperance here between what you pleasure, what brings you pleasure, what you enjoy and rest versus, you know, putting in the dedication, putting in the effort, going balls to the wall, so to say, when you're able to find a balance between those two polarities this month, I think is when you actually find fulfillment because we have the nine of cups here, which tells me that there is fulfillment to be found and you can get to where you want to go. It's just a matter of kind of finding like a balancing act this month of kind of figuring out when to go, when to stop, when to, you know, relax a little bit, when to enjoy the moment rather than, you know, pushing so hard, you know, and we also have the king of swords here, you know, after the nine of cups, you know, basically saying like, there will be clarity, there will be fulfillment, you will step into a position of leadership or a position of feeling, you know, more clear about who you are and what you want in March, which is really cool. So we also have the spirit of the place, which is about authenticity and your environment and what you have around you, what you keep around you, all of those types of things. So this month could bring up topics like that as well. Uh, where you are put in situations where it's important to be authentically you, where it's important to embrace your authenticity and not shove it away or repress it because of your surroundings. Um, this is a month that's really going to put you in situations that give you certain lessons about being authentic and true to yourself, Aquarius. So, and then we also have encouragement. And so once again, I feel like this is a very encouraging month. It does come with its own challenges, its own issues and stuff, but I, I do feel like this month overall Aquarius is really like an upgrade for you. It's like uh, leveling up in some way. It's like, you know, feeling like you can finally embrace and initiate things with the, this new found you after we, after we just got out of your season, after you just had your birthday. It's like you are like being reborn, so to say, and now you can finally like put that into action. Now you can finally implement that and integrate that and do what you want to do with that, especially after March 6 with Venus and Mars in your sign. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Aquarius. Other than that, we have, like I said, a lot of beautiful Pisces energy in your second. So this could really be bringing up, uh, you know, finances and money and income and, you know, how you want to expand and maybe seeing your potential in terms of those things, in terms of money, in terms of your priorities and, and really, you know, reevaluating your priorities and maybe even letting go of priorities that are holding you back from your full potential in some way. We also have a Virgo full moon happening on the 18th in your eighth house of other people's money and shared resources and shared finances. So those could be some topics that come up around that time, money that's owed to you or money that you owe to others. But I'm going to do a whole separate video on that. So make sure you watch out for that. Um, and then, yeah, towards the end of the month on the 28th, Venus will conjunct Saturn in your first house. And so that may be a time where you're getting very serious about what it is you desire, what it is you want, you know, relationships in your life, boundaries, those types of things towards the very end of the month. So watch out for that. But other than that, that is basically what I see for you this month, Aquarius. Definitely let me know down below if this resonates. I'd really love to hear your feedback as always. And if you watched it all the way through, make sure to comment hashtag Aquarius gang down below and let me know that you stayed the whole way. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. That concludes this video and I will see you guys in the next one.